Now, it was celebrated as the deal of the desert when Colonel Gaddafi was brought in from the cold by Tony Blair. But the end of Gaddafi threw up embarrassing details about the ties between Britain and Gaddafi's Libya. Today, new documents obtained by this programme reveal a far deeper relationship than previously thought, showing British intelligence traded detailed information about Gaddafi's opponents in the United Kingdom and around the world. The paper trail comes from Abdel Hakim Belhaj, who is suing the British government over his illegal rendition to Libya in 2004. The filmmaker and producer Kevin Toulis has this exclusive report. This is Abu Salim prison in the suburbs of Tripoli. Under the Libyan tyrant Gaddafi, thousands of political prisoners were crammed into its cells. It was a place of massacre, torture, despair and wasted lives. Abu Salim's terrible past continues to haunt the British government. And now, new secret Libyan documents reveal even deeper collaboration with the Gaddafi regime. <laughs> Libyan politician Abdul Hakim Belhaj is suing the government for millions of pounds in compensation after MI6 kidnapped Belhaj and his pregnant wife in Asia in 2004 and rendered them into the hands of Gaddafi's torturers. And for Mr. Belhaj into this cell block. This is my house. How long did you stay to live in this cell? In this cell I stayed one full year. This is its width and this is the length. This is where I slept and where I wrote my name. The living conditions were really hard, especially in summer. It was boiling hot. The doors were all blocked. It was suffocating. I used to be taken out from my cell with my hands tied behind my back. I was so badly treated, I was beaten and left standing for long hours in the sun. And then I would feel that being in this small cell, despite knowing how hard it was, was better. In the cell, Mr. Belhaj learned he'd been sentenced to death. I still remember very clearly the day when the prison guard opened the grill and threw in a red prison uniform, you know, the one they forced the condemned man to wear. The sentence was never carried out, but why Mr. Belhaj ended up at the mercy of the Gaddafi regime is a question that will now be decided in the British High Court. From secret documents found during the fall of Tripoli, we know that Mr. Belhaj and his wife fell into an MI6 trap in March 2004. First seized in a joint MI6 CIA operation, Belhaj was tortured by American interrogators in Bangkok and then flown, hooded and bound, to Libya. We were not the enemies of the West. We had one goal, to liberate the Libyan people from the Gaddafi regime. As the leader of the Libyan Islamic fighting group, Belhaj was a sworn enemy of Gaddafi. He fought with the Afghan Mujahideen alongside Osama bin Laden. After 9-11, it's understandable that MI6 and the CIA would be interested in anyone linked to Al-Qaeda. But was Belhaj really a threat to the West? When MI6 sent Abdul Hakim Belhaj and his pregnant wife back to Libya, they must have known there were just two options. One, that they could both be killed. Or two, that they'd end up here in Abu Salim, a place that's the very mortuary of hope and the epicenter of the tyrant Gaddafi's power. But the one-time prisoner turned rebel fighter leader is now a powerful figure in today's Libya. He invited me to lunch in one of Gaddafi's luxurious former offices. During his imprisonment, Mr. Belhaj was interrogated by MI6 and the CIA. Can you describe these men from MI6? There was a woman, uh, 40s, and a man in his 40s. 
fat and bald with a white beard. One of them was speaking in Arabic. It was difficult to speak openly, but by signs I told them that we were being tortured by being hung and beaten. And they showed me by signs that my message was understood. The torture never stopped. Then, on Gaddafi's old desk, Mr. Balhaj showed me secret Libyan files on his foreign tormentors from MI6 and the CIA. Mr. Balhaj has just shown me a very important document. Uh, it's the foundation stone for the cooperation between MI6 and MI5 and the, the Libyan Gaddafi regime. It proves that the date of the visit was October 2002. It names the senior MI6 and MI5 personnel who attended that meeting. And it also talks about the aims of the meeting, which were counter-terrorism, intelligence exchange and mutual cooperation. Now, it was that mutual cooperation that ended up with Mr. Balhaj being kidnapped from Asia and taken back to Gaddafi's prisons to be tortured. By January 2003, MI6 was sending Gaddafi's intelligence services detailed reports on Libyan exiles in Manchester, including mobile phone numbers, passports and their exact addresses. <laughs> You can find the Libyans that have British nationality, their phone numbers, their activities. The source is the British intelligence. This is the translation. The documents are available and there are a lot of them. One of the MI6 files had a whole list of names and addresses of Gaddafi's opponents living in Iran. MI6 were asking the Libyans for more information. I took the files and went to see Mr. Balhaj's former deputy, Sami al-Sadi, also rendered to Libya by MI6. Mr. al-Sadi sued over his torture and was given over £2 million in compensation by the British government last December. Were you staying in a flat in Tehran in 2003? Mm -hmm. did, did you know that the um, MI6 were trying to, to, trying to find out more information about you? and passing that information to the Libyan. I had no details about this, but I knew that more than one country was asking for intelligence on me, even from the Iranian government. But at the time, I had no idea. Mr. al-Sadi also insists he was never a threat to the West. Do you think you were a gift from MI6 to Colonel Gaddafi? No, it was not a gift. It was a deal to turn me in to Muammar al-Gaddafi, who was not able to capture us. It was a big thing for him to get us, and he was prepared to pay as much as it takes. And that was the deal between Tony Blair and Gaddafi. These files are the tip of an iceberg. They show that MI6 was trading intelligence gathered in Jordan and Iran with the Gaddafi regime. One has to wonder, would we find the same sorts of files, the same evidence of UK complicity in torture in Cairo, Tehran, Damascus, and across the Arab world? Jack Straw, the Labour Foreign Secretary, and the then Deputy Head of MI6, Sir Mark Allen, have been named as co-conspirators in Mr. Belhaj's torture case against the British government. So far, Mr. Belhaj has refused to settle and is demanding an apology. At that time, Tony Blair, when he used to make visits to the Gaddafi regime, when he was sitting in the Gaddafi tent, we were in prison undergoing many types of torture and abuse. To whoever did these crimes, I tell them that confessing to a crime is a virtue. Apologies need courage, lots of courage. The government declined to comment on the claims made by Mr. Belhaj and Mr. El Sadi but it reiterated it stands firmly against torture and cruel and degrading treatment. A police investigation is underway and a public inquiry into alleged UK involvement in the mistreatment and rendition of detainees has been promised. The first court hearing is expected in April. <laughs>